Hello, um, this is a demo video for the start and end of each month. Uh, I use this quite regularly because I make spreadsheets that usually last for a year um, so that they don't get too bogged down with too much data and it calculates the, the year and all the rest of it. But then when you get when you come down to analysis, you need to often know the start and the end of, of each month um, so that you can actually be able to inform Excel. So this is a good indicator, a good way to show you how to use the, the, the date function. Um, so I just want to show you how that works uh, very briefly here. So what I want to do is I want to be able to put in the 1st of January 2022, for example, and I want to be able to then have that tell me the 1st of Feb, 1st of March, 1st of April, 1st of May, etc. And I want this one to then give me the 31st of Jan, the end of Feb, end of March, end of April, etc., etc. So let's see how we can work out that formula. Um, this is where I use the date formula. However, the date formula requires me to put in the year, put in the month and put in the day. And I don't really necessarily want to do that. So the day formula would work like this. If I said date and I want the 1st of February, 2022, I'd say date, the year is 2022. The month is 02, which is February and the day is 01. And then that will give me the 1st of Feb. But I don't want to do that. I want to do it based on the last one. So how do I do that? Well, very simple is a year, a month, and a day function. So, for example, if I did year and that one above there, it would do it as a date. But if I format that generally, it says 2022. So I can actually extract the year from that. So that is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to do what we call a nested formula, and I'm actually going to nest them together. So I'm going to start with equals date. <clears throat> Instead of putting in 2022, I want to pull the year from the month above so now i actually start a new new function saying year run above close it and then i need the month but instead of putting in zero two i'm going to take the above month i'll add in the the adjustment later on so i put in month take the date from above and then i come in and I ask me for the day and instead of putting in zero one i want the day from above so i say day from above close the bracket close the main the, the date function I click enter. So that gives me exactly the same date, but that's not what I want. I want the following date on the same day, same year, different month. So then all I do now is I go to the end of that outside the bracket and I just put one. So it's whatever month plus one. There we go. So I've got the first of Feb and I can copy that formula down. I've done the text once here. So it pulls it out so we can see that it's, it's right. January, February, March, April, May, et cetera, from down to December. So I've got the start of the months. Now what I need is I need to have the end of those months. Now, as we all know, not every month is 30 days, and we're not going to go around putting in different days for different months and trying to extract which one it is and then doing lookup tables as to how many months, because then you've got February that's got a leap year and it just throws a spanner in the works. So what do we do? What I do is I use exactly the same concept, but I just, I'm a little bit more clever about how I do it. So what I say is I go equals date, whoops, date, and I select across here to go year i want that year please date remember year that one month that one day brackets that one uh no we want to put an extra bracket at the end so that formula it was the same as that one that we started with but now we need to put the pluses in because now we've got the January, but this time, instead of just adding on the month, what we do is we say plus one for the month. So it goes to the 1st of Feb, but now we know the day was the first. We want to go back one day. So we say day D9 minus one, because one minus one will take it to the previous month. And there you go, 31st of January. And that formula can now be copied throughout down to the bottom. So now we've got 31st of January, 28th of Feb, 31st of March, etc. So we now know the first day of each of the months of the year, the second day of each of them, uh, the, sorry, the last day of each of the months, there they are listed. And with those formulas in place, all we really need to do is put that date in, which means if you create this template and you open up a new spreadsheet and we were to come in there and put in, for example, the 1st of January, 2023, they would all update accordingly and you'd have the 12 months, one year with the start and end dates. And that would provide you with a basis to go and do what you need to do. So I hope that that's helpful to you. I wish you all the best. Thank you very much and goodbye.